there is a more and more people paying attention to the product they are buying. Let's talk about one of the major problem in Vietnam, e-waste, hazardous waste. How do you address this problem? Based on our last year sales results, 25% of our sales is coming from the most advanced in the energy and the water consumption appliance. What does sustainability mean to you? It means that we use the sources we have in a, in a way that we live a proper life, but we will not destroy the future of the next generations. Hi, welcome to the Success Business Podcast. Good to see you again. Uh, my name is Kuo Khan. I'm your host for today. And you're listening to Greenovate series on the VSuccess business. This is a collaboration between VSuccess and Nordcham, Nordic Chamber of Commerce in Vietnam. We're going to talk to uh, corporate leaders, industry pioneers, activists, experts about the topics of green innovation, um, sustainability, renewable energy, environments, etc. And in this episode today, My guest is someone from Electrolux, a very, very popular brand in Vietnam's household. He has been with the company for 21 years, and he's always played a very important role in the company's sustainability initiative. So let's hear more about those initiatives today. Such an honor to welcome Mr. Thomas Sibikowski, General Manager and Head of Sales Southeast Asia of Electrolux. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me here. It's my pleasure. How are you doing? Continue. What brought you to Vietnam, Thomas? All right. So uh, as you mentioned, I'm 20, more than 20 years in a, in a company, but uh, three and a half or almost four years in, uh, in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I moved uh, here inside a company in the uh, end of 2019 to take a position of a general manager Electrolux Vietnam. How is the life here treating you so far? <laughs> I mean, there is nothing to complain uh, <laughs> so far, so so good. There was, uh, of course, a lot of challenges and uh, maybe not the perfect timing uh, from uh, from my side with, mem- with the movement because yeah. I moved just before the uh, pandemic started. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a challenging time, but I think a lot of learnings and uh, so far, so good. How is your industry doing right now, given the whole global economic slowdown in this year? And it's, of course, touching our business as uh, as well. Um, Generally, still, there is a huge potential on the market, looking on the penetration of the household. Mm -hmm. Still, a lot of uh, household in in Vietnam is not uh, equipped with the electronics goods. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that's what we see in the last four or five months. Uh, We we see the slowdown of the the total market. Uh, And this is something which uh, which happened for Vietnam, I think, first time for for many years. Because previously, year on year, there was a two-digit growth. Well, now we have a kind of a correction of the market, but I believe it's a it's a temporary uh, um, issue uh, and um, yeah we, we should come back to the uh, to the normal grow I, b- I believe great let's talk about uh, the main topic sustainability I always ask my guests um, the first question about the definition because sustainability is a huge concept and Everyone has his own definition. So from your perspective, what does sustainability mean to you? All right. Uh, for, for, for me, personally, it means that we use the sources we have in our hands in a, in a way that we live a proper life, but we will not destroy the future of the next generations. So that's how I see from the business perspective, from the life perspective, that we are doing our best not to create difficulties for our next generation. Given that definition, then tell me more about the journey as Electrolux. Um, How does this journey evolving over the last 20 years that you've been with the company? 
Our sustainability journey in Electrolux started even earlier than uh, the last 20 years because we started at the beginning of the 90s. And of course, the sustainability evolved during those last uh, 30 years. We are a Swedish company. We have Swedish roots. Uh, yeah, we are here thanks to the Nordic Chamber of, of Commerce. So, so uh, Nordic companies are quite well known and started early in a sustainability or in a, in a social responsibility as, uh, as well. Mm. As we do in, uh, uh, in Electrolux, and, and in these 30 years, the sustain, sustainability evolved in, uh, inside the organization to the level that it becomes part of our DNA. And the sustainability simply is in everything we are doing as Electrolux. And under the uh, umbrella of, of our program for the better 2030, there are three segments of our activities. So, so first one is a, a better company. Mm -hmm. So this is the package of our activities, lead our production to be climate neutral in 2030. Mm -hmm. Another part is a better solution. Uh, which is uh, related to our products to lead the energy, energy efficiency in our product and also to build a more circu circular product and a business model. Mm -hmm. And a third element uh, is related uh, to our consumers. It's uh, under, the, under the umbrella uh, of better living. So this is all of the activities we are doing as a company mm -hmm. to motivate, to inspire, and to educate mm -hmm. users of our products to live better, more sustainable life. Yeah, that's a long journey. A lot of things. It is. It a is. A lot of it's, things to it's do. It's evolved from kind of to fulfill the state regulation, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, the kind of uh, levels which was that time uh, announced, but it's a very long way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we are landed in a, in a place where this is a kind of our business thinking or, or there is no business without the sustainability for us in Electrolux. Yeah, I know that's a long journey and lots of things to do. But if we could pick one thing to represent Electrolux DNA about sustainability, that's, what should we be talking about? I mean, what kind of key areas that we should focus on? when talking about initiative in sustainability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so taking our product is, is definitely about the efficiency. Uh, we are manufacturing, we are delivering the, the, the product, and there is a usage of or, or, um, daily use of, of our product in our customer uh, warehouses mm -hmm. and to the recycling of, of, of the product. So it's a, it's a whole value chain where we are focused uh, to to improve uh, our performance. And talking about the products, um, uh, you have like a program called Trade In Program. So could you kind of elaborate on that program and how does it affect uh, your sustainability um, journey? So we started uh, almost a year ago in uh, in Vietnam. Uh, the program where where we offer. Uh, to our consumer, once you are you are buying uh, directly from from us on uh, on our website, uh, let's take a washing machine as an example. Yeah. So once you are uh, buying washing machine, then we are giving the opportunity uh, to order also the pickup uh, of the old appliance, and this is on our cost. And we are doing with with our Vietnamese partners, we are doing the proper recycling of the of the product which is not that easy in uh, in vietnam so and on the, on the top of that we are okay. we are collecting old appliance not uh, not only our electronics oh, right. any brand, brand any brand but we are doing any any brand so so we are uh, simply collecting and uh, and doing full scrap uh, of the of the old product oh, that's wonderful so you're taking back any old appliance from customers if, if they have to. We, we started with a with a washing machine as we yeah, are quite okay. well known in the, in Vietnam with a, with a washing machine and that's the uh, big part of, of our sales. But but we are also introducing now fridges and uh, and the other uh, appliance. And I have to say that the uh, this program uh, goes above our expectation. Mm -hmm. So, so there is a very good response from the, from the market. And it looks like that the, 
for many people is uh, they are take concern about the uh, um, sustainability and they want to be sure yeah. that the yes. product is uh, is recycled or, yeah. or uh, treated in a proper professional sure. way and uh, based on that we will uh, we will implement the same program in thailand malaysia and singapore this year mm -hmm. and how does that affect your cost of doing business i mean what what's to be the biggest challenge of doing that taking back collecting collecting back all, all appliance of course the, there is a certain cost uh, of uh, of that but uh, I think we are we are not talking only about the the the, the cost uh, as a such, but also a kind of a reputation uh, of the of the brand, and and simply we want to contribute to the Vietnam sustainability awareness and uh, and a, uh, and a take action in in that area, as we see that there is a still. Uh, quite a lot of things to do uh, in Vietnam to be to 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 join uh, countries which are more advanced in that aspect. So the c collecting all appliances, you see the impact on your business as well. Yeah, there, there the, is a certain cost of of, of yeah. doing that. Yeah, but uh, but I mean the return on on let's say how people how people feel about this the brand and the way you taking care of customers. It's creating another return on your business as well. Sure, that's uh, that's something which is not that easy to measure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, looking on the looking on the results, I do believe that uh, this is globally, but in Vietnam as well, that there is a more and more people, customers, paying attention to the product they are buying, and they want to buy from the ethical company, the company who is which is investing in a sustainability and and simply taking care of the environment and and uh, based on our last year sales results 25% of our sales is coming from the most advanced in the energy and the water consumption appliance which is of course having a, a impact directly to our uh, gross profit sure so what area that you invest the most in terms of sustainability What will be the most, the biggest sustainability investment for your company? I mean, the, as as I mentioned at the beginning, there is those three areas, and and uh, it's it's a quite a difficult to say that you know which one is, is which better. one is the is okay. the biggest, yeah, because the taking R and D and it is starting from the research and develop of the of the product. Yeah, our long term target 2050 is to be climate neutral along the whole value chain. So from the creation of the product, production, uh, sales, the, the daily use to uh, uh, end of life, uh, all, of those, all of those elements, we, we, we want to be a climate neutral uh, company. Climate neutral company. Yeah. So in order to achieve that goal, um, what are some of the biggest challenges for that? I have to say that we did a fantastic progress uh, over the over the last years, and I'm very proud to share that in 2022 we met our 2025 targets. So we reduce the uh, in a production, we reduce the um, emission 82%. Our target versus 2015, our target was 80, so we reduced uh, 82, more than happy uh, with that. So so we are uh, three years in uh, in advance, which is a good starting uh, point for the, uh, for the next levels. Wow. And, uh, and with our products, com uh, once again, compared to the 2015, mm -hmm. the energy and the water consumption coming from our product is 25% percent lower um, versus the, the the base which is 2015 what are some of the key environmental issues of your industry that that you have to face right now and still need to solve yeah i would say that the, we have a different challenges uh, based on the regions and the, and the country but the but the overall uh, based uh, it's it's a production it's a logistic uh, we, we are doing quite a good progress but uh, but but still uh, we need to uh, use more recyclable materials in uh, in our in our product we we just started in Europe uh, with a new fridge uh, where the 
uh, inner liners, 70% of the inner liners is coming from the recycled plastic. And we have a plan to, in 2030, to use half of the plastic in all of our appliance from recycling. Mm -hmm. So, but but it's it's challenging uh, still uh, having the right partners, having all of the infrastructure to make that happen. We are we are um, reducing the emission coming from uh, from transportation, shipping, and uh, uh, truck mm -hmm. with our partners because we do not have our own uh, logistic de uh, department. Uh, so last year, 20% reduction of the greenhouses gases emission, mm. uh, which is which is very good in a partnership with a shipping company. Uh, mm, they are also using more biogases. Uh, one of our partners is uh, using a biogases contain the used cooking oil, uh, mm. for example, or uh, or using um, uh, liquid gas, which is. Uh, uh, simply uh, much more uh, environmental friendly uh, than the traditional uh, fuels. Uh, yeah, so so still there is a, there is a lot of uh, uh, challenges in front of us, but but so far I'm uh, happy with the progress we did. Great to hear. For the trade-in program, um, what kind of partners that you need in order to run it smoothly? I mean, why is there other uh, players in your industry doing this? Is, is it hard to do that? Or you need what kind of player, what kind of partners that no, collaborate the, the, with you? Fortunately, we have a trustable partner in Vietnam to, yeah. to, to do that. And uh, um, they are certified by the, uh, by the local authorities uh, that everything is, you know, in, uh, uh, in, in that process in, uh, in line with the uh, expectation. Also, we, we, we did our own audit uh, to, to, to be sure uh, that everything is fine. So as some people are saying, trust is good, control better. So in, in that area, uh, that definitely works. But, but we are in staying with Vietnam or, or focus a bit more on the, on the Vietnam. Still, we are uh, looking for the partners uh, in a logistic, in the transportation. Mm. Uh, which offer more sustainable uh, solutions, so more uh, electric cars. Vietnam is doing quite a big progress with, uh, uh, with electric car, but this is more related to the personal mm -hmm. uh, cars than the, than the trucks. Uh, so if, if, if there are any Vietnamese company uh, doing something in, the, in that area, more than welcome to, uh, to contact us, uh, or maybe we should talk more about the electric motorbikes yeah. in, case of, in case of Vietnam, right? It's getting more popular here. Yeah, it is, yeah. it is. And, uh, and I, I believe soon we will see some, uh, also some deliveries of Electrolux products coming, uh, coming on the electric motorbike, for example. So uh, those aspects still, uh, still there is uh, some space uh, for us to, to, uh, to do some improvement. Right. I, I read about uh, some of the future outlook that uh, Alexa uh, is trying to, to um, address, which is uh, D2C marketplace. Tell me more about that plan. All right, so uh, we really appreciate direct interaction with with our customers, and uh, and with that uh, during the whole um, process of of using our appliance. So from the kind of a pre purchase when people are um, searching, doing a research, or asking friends, families. Uh, we we also offer thanks to to our D2C, thanks to our website. Uh, there is a online consultancy. Yeah. Uh, so, so simply we offer kind of a best po uh, solution, most suitable for for your family, for your needs. Yeah. Uh, then on the, on the top of that, uh, you can you can buy a product. Of course, we we offer. Also, uh, disposal of the old appliance. Mm -hmm. uh, on the top of that, we offer the services like installation. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer the original accessories to, to, to our product, uh, installment sales. So there, there is a kind of a, a full package uh, related to, to our appliance from the 
uh, purchasing till end of life, and in the in the meantime, also if there is uh, some maintenance uh, needed, we, we we offer as well repair. If uh, if something happened, this is uh, this is something which we offer on the Vietnamese market. Let's talk about one of the major problem in Vietnam, which is the uh, ele- uh, electronics waste. E-waste. I believe that the most of the appliances they are they are recyclable, uh, but the issue is that we do not have a infrastructure to make that happen. So, how does the model of D 2 C marketplace contribute to the sustainability journey? It's it's uh, contribute in a, in an area that the, first of all. We will help you to find the most suitable to your needs uh, yeah. appliance. Yeah, taking a fridge as an example, taking size of the of your family, mm-hmm. uh, the kind of a lifestyle, cooking at home, not cooking at home. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to to keep a, a huge uh, fridge at home uh, for a single person. Uh, yeah, from sustainability uh, perspective. Then the opposite, uh, if if uh, the it's a big family and so on and and uh, thanks to our appliance also in if if we are staying with a fridge the based on our solution uh, we help with a uh, or to to find against food waste uh, thanks to the uh, our uh, humidity and the temperature distribution in a in a fridge you can keep your veggies up to two weeks uh, longer uh, than uh, than any any other fridge. So your product can actually help consumers to achieve a more sustainable life. Exactly. That's the that's how we want to act. Mm. And, but how do you uh, and communicate we, and, and how yeah. do you educate them? All right. Uh, so so I I believe that the communication around our sustainable activities uh, kind of a. Uh, 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 social campaigns are equally important as a brand building uh, initiatives and uh, as a one of the of the example we we run the uh, campaign related to the laundry uh, last year that was a global campaign we reached millions of people uh, highlighting the issue related to the uh, fast uh, fashion uh, industry so so there is a there is a uh, research showing that we are in average we are using our clothes uh, we are wearing only 10 times mm. but based on the based on our solution uh, in uh, in laundry based on our technology uh, we want to make the clothes last uh, twice longer mm. Uh, with a half of the environmental impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so kind of a basic thing. If you reduce the temperature for 40 degrees mm. to 30 degrees doing the laundry, you will save 30% of the energy mm-hmm. without the, any impact of the of the quality of uh, of uh, of your laundry. Yeah. So if the consumer are more educated about this subject then they can really have a better life by using products from that's Electrolux. that's what we are doing and yeah. uh, and we are investing in uh, uh, education and uh, inspiration uh, of our customers to to live a more better more sustainable life how do you how do you measure the impact of how do you measure the progress of of educating customers how do you see the change We are doing uh, the the, the la- this beginning of this year, uh, if I'm not mistaken, beginning of this year or end of last year. We we did a, a huge research globally. Uh, we are we are doing a research about the that was the, the dedicated to laundry. We asked 15,000 people uh, around the globe about their, their habits, and we are we were doing in uh, three consecutive years. Mm-hmm. So we 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 see how the how the uh, habits are, are changed and uh, and uh, that people are more aware of uh, of uh, sustainability related to the you know usage of the detergent energy and all of those things uh, and and of course the the biggest uh, the biggest problem is that we are not using clothes as long as as we should right. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. I'm not sure if you can share this, but what is your most popular product in Vietnam? Would that would that be washing machine? Washing machine. 
yeah, it is. That's like it a is. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's talk about one of the major problem in Vietnam, which is the uh, elec- uh, electronics waste, e-waste. Yes. Uh, most of them are not recycled and lead to hazardous, uh, hazardous waste, very um, poisonous for the environment. When you know electric device, when you throw away to the trash. How do you address this problem? How do you solve these challenges? Yeah, so so we are taking this small step and a contribution to the society here as we are collecting uh, the that's old one appliance. Way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's a one way. But coming to that, what do you say? I, I believe that the most of the appliance, they are, they are recyclable. Uh, but the issue is that we do not have a uh, good system in Vietnam mm. Uh, or infrastructure to make that happen. And uh, I believe that the, I'm, I'm very happy to see that there is a more and more public discussion about the sustainability. Mm-hmm. There is uh, more interest coming from people, especially younger generations. Sure. So, so uh, uh, that's, uh, that's really good to, to see. But as a, as a business representative, I believe that we should uh, also have a open discussion uh, with authorities, with a, with a stage to work on that because we need also some regulation sure. uh, to, to, to make the condition equally the same for all of the players. Yeah, I know you, you guys, um, Electrolux uh, is serving around 120 markets around the world. Uh, what kind of lesson that we can learn from, from them in terms of uh, solution for the e-waste things problem here in Vietnam? Yeah, that's uh, that's what I see. That uh, countries and markets are on a on a different uh, level of maturity to to tackle that problem. But uh, I would say that there is no better solution as to have a target to collect the e waste in a tons per year, mm-hmm. and that number should uh, be related to the number of a new appliance selling on the on the market mm-hmm. and uh, and simply follow that uh, that target yeah we we need the infrastructure we have to secure that it, it is easy for the end user once they uh, they buying a new appliance or, or the old one is broken and uh, and they want to simply drop to the to the to the point where it will be col- collected and and treated in a in a proper way yeah? so i believe in a a city like uh, Ho Chi Minh, uh, taking a size, it should be in uh, every district, uh, some place which is uh, easy to access, and you can free of charge deliver your old appliance. Yeah? Otherwise, people have no choice. Yeah. So, I mean, you have so many initiatives so far. I mean, other than the trade-in program, what kind of other initiative that you plan to, to execute in the future? So generally, we will uh, extend our trade-in program for the for the other appliance. We will collect uh, ourselves uh, more appliance, uh, education, inspiration. Uh, so so this is something we will uh, we will drive in uh, in the coming years, and of course we will launch a new uh, product, more sustainable, uh, with a, a more materials uh, from the uh, from the recycling the the fridge uh, i mentioned already uh, you will have a, a chance uh, soon mm. to see our new packaging with really? a small appliance where we use uh, only four colors so 70 percent less ink uh, on the on the packaging which is also having a significant impact and uh, by the way 2024 we will use the uh, water-based ink uh, on the on the uh, packaging only, uh, so quite a quite a lot of uh, uh, initiative. Uh, micro microplastic filter, so something uh, which uh, w- um, works also with uh, with any other washing machine. Capture ninety percent of the microplastic which is released uh, during washing a synthetic clothes. Mm. Yeah, so uh, so um, I would say quite a, quite a lot of initiatives from the product, uh, from the uh, production or, or logistic uh, perspective, but also in an education and inspiration area for, uh, for our customers. As a consumer, what would you say to me uh, if... 
I want to contribute to the sustainability development of this home appliance industry. In 2022, we reached our 2025 targets and we are on the good track to hit our 2030 targets, which is uh, to be climate neutral. What kind of problems that you run into when you try to ex execute those initiatives? Um, what needs to be done in order to be in order to have successful initiative like that? I believe that the, of course would be <laughs> would be perfect to uh, to engage more people, uh, but that also require uh, some more investment from uh, from from our side. We we need to balance our social activities uh, with a, with a profit as well. We are a public company. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have to deliver business results, but uh, once everything is is going well in uh, in that area, then we can of course uh, go go faster with uh, with uh, our investment in uh, uh, social activities uh, and supporting the sustainability not only coming from yeah. our ourselves but also from the other organization because we are very open uh, for cooperation we are uh, partnering uh, plenty of the initiatives uh, also here in uh, Vietnam uh, we work with uh, rethink plastic uh, and engage our employees as a volunteers for some by the way uh, cleaning this area where we are shooting today uh, our uh, conversation uh, we are working close with um, Planet Water, so the organization uh, which is specialized in uh, water filtration to make a water drinkable. So in the last uh, two years, we did a couple of projects in a rural area mm -hmm. of, uh, of Vietnam to, uh, to secure access for around 5,000 people for drinkable water. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, this is, the, this is the different aspects uh, of, uh, of our activities going beyond the purely business uh, uh, targets. Sustainability is a long-term thing. And uh, you've been with the company for so long, 21 years, over two decades. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, what would go on top of your mind if I asked you a question that, what were some of the things that your company did earlier in the past? And now you see the return, you see it, the sustainability effect of that decision. I mean, for a long, long time ago, and now you can see how the company is evolving and developing for so long, for 21 years, because of that practice, because of that decision back in the days. What, what would go on top of your mind about this company? I would say 2018, uh, so not that very long time not ago. Not that long. 2018, uh, we've been among uh, first 100 companies with a science-based target uh, to deliver uh, Paris Climate Agreement uh, under EU uh, United Nations direction. And, uh, and from, from that time, we treat all of the KPIs, all of the sustainability uh, targets in the same way as our business target. And I have to say that there is, from my perspective, there is no better way to deliver right. those steps, yeah, those milestones. And uh, and uh, I'm more than happy to to see mm. that we we in 2022 we reach our 2025 targets, yep. and we are on the good track to hit our 2030 targets, which is uh, to be climate neutral in the in the operation. Most. In the product means in a production. So connecting sustainability target to the business target. The same it's time. connected to the business target. On the top of that, I have I, I can say it's also uh, connected with the uh, incentive for for our top management. Mm. So it's exactly the same as any other business parameters to keep people fully focused on that. This is not sustainability. Is 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 not you know on the side of our business. It's a part of our business. And, and we are treated that in the a, in a same way as any other uh, business KPIs. Yeah. As a consumer, what would you say to me uh, if I want to be a better consumer in this industry? I mean, 
I want to contribute to the sustainability development of this home appliance industry as a consumer when I use my product. What should I do now? So before you buy something, do the proper research. Who is the producer? Is it an ethical company? How they, uh, what, what's their approach uh, to, to sustainability? Uh, what, what's, the, uh, what's the impact of, uh, of the environment uh, based, on, uh, based on that? Uh, then also, if the, if the product is possible to repair, if the spare parts available on the market is the service uh, of the appliance uh, is uh, is is quite uh, easy to fix mm. so those uh, those kind of uh, elements yeah yeah so it can really change my behavior towards like a yeah. sustainable behavior yeah th- th- once you decide what what product or what producer you you want to buy and mm-hmm. that's really makes a difference mm-hmm. and uh, and then also the usage of the uh, or during your daily life how to use the how to use the product, how to use the full capability of uh, of the product. Sure. Yeah. So as a reduce your yeah. reduce your temperature during the washing, <laughs> ten yeah. degrees, and, and it, that that's a big change already. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> um, as a GM, general manager uh, of uh, Electrolux uh, in Vietnam, what were some of your most critical or important strategic decision that you have made that contribute to your sustainability journey at your company? Uh, definitely the, the uh, direct sales to uh, direct interaction with, uh, with the customers. We, we started our uh, online uh, okay, activities. Okay, the D2C yeah, D2C, uh, Some two years ago, so, mm-hmm. so still uh, we are growing okay. that, uh, that part of business. I really appreciate the Right. Direct contact with a uh, with a customer. We we want uh, uh, to deliver long life experience with uh, with our product on every stage. Yeah. So uh, fully support uh, during the life cycle of the of the product our customers and uh, by having this direct interaction, uh, we can we can build a relation and and we can manage that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what is Vietnam's market? Uh, how is Vietnam's market playing in the strategic map uh, of Electrolux? Vietnam is the, the definitely in the Southeast Asia one of our most important uh, markets with a huge potential. Uh, we have a good uh, brand awareness in uh, in Vietnam. Definitely, so far, <laughs> and, and and of course we want to continue our investments uh, here. Hundred million people country 25 million households so not everyone is uh, is using a sustainable appliance uh, so far and we we want to help with that yeah I mean- electrolux brand in the vietnamese mind is already big but i'm wondering about sustainable brand in the vietnamese mind when they think about uh, your brand do they think about sustainability how much do they think about it? Definitely, and 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 this is something we we have to nail uh, to our customer heads that the Electrolux means, uh, or, or they simply connect our brand with a with a sustainability because it's really our DNA. It's uh, it's uh, in uh, everything we are we are doing. We are keeping a sustainability in uh, in mind, and it's it's not a marketing. Uh, it's uh, it's we are truly. A uh, sustainable company. Well, thank you for sharing and uh, good luck with the journey you had. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for coming to Vietnam and hope you have a my pleasure <laughs> enjoyable life here. <laughs> what do you thank love you. most about this country so far? What do you enjoy the most here? Oh, there is a, th- th- that would be a long list. Uh, <laughs> okay, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, but the, uh, I would say that if if you ask me for a for a for a one thing, it, that would be the, definitely the people. Uh, yeah. Very kind, energy. peaceful energy, yeah. optimism, uh, open-minded, uh, yeah. really good energy, and uh, and also the approach to the business. Uh, how we see, you know, how how people try to 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 build a better future. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's uh, that's really something inspired, and I'm super happy uh, to have uh, friends uh, here in Vietnam. Sure, I hope we can have like a like a culture of sustainability here in Vietnam soon when when you guys are raising the awareness 
and try to educate Definitely more. we will do our <laughs> best uh, to raise that topic yeah. and, uh, and uh, yeah I see that the importance of the sustainability is growing which is a very good signal for us and uh, that gives some uh, some hope and uh, I do believe, uh, and the uh, history of, of Vietnam business in Vietnam or change in Vietnam shows that that uh, once there is a kind of a commitment to do uh, something, to change something, then it might go quite fast. Mm-hmm. So, so um, I hope that will be the in case of a sustainability in Vietnam. Right. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Much. Good luck with everything. Thank you so much and good luck with the projects uh, ahead of you. Thank you so much for sharing. That's uh, Mr. Thomas Sibikowski, General Manager and Head of Sales, Southeast Asia of Electrolux, one of the most popular brands in Vietnam's household. And I guess we have to connect a sustainability target with business target. Sustainability is something that has to be part of the business goal. It's not something you can put aside, something just for branding or marketing purposes. It must be part of the business. So thank you so much for listening to this episode today. You can uh, subscribe to Viet Success channel for more upcoming episodes or follow us on Spotify, Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts to listen to this conversation anytime. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.